Okay, so we're going to create a class called Demo Java Menu with a public static void main. And the parent class will going to be javax.swing.jframe. One way to do it is to literally type it. An alternate approach is to click Browse and literally type jframe. And once it locates, locates JFrame for you, you simply click OK. And I'm going to write the rest for you. So either way, you can bring about the parent class. And then you can click Finish. And that will going to do everything for you that you need in your program. Let's create the constructor demo Java menu. In the constructor of the program, we're going to set the frame properties, like set title, Java menu, set size. set visible through. In the main method, we will simply invoke an unnamed object of Java menu, and that will going to invoke the constructor and bring about the frame. So now if I run it, it basically places this whole window in the um, located at the top left corner. However, if I want to place it in a different location, I can use a property set location relative to and instead of providing a location, if I leave it to a value of null, the window will automatically be placed right in the center of the screen. So set location relative to, if set to a value of, if you pass a parameter of null, it will going to set it right in the middle or the center of the frame. work with menus in Java, you need many objects. First of all, you need an object of J menu bar because all the menus are placed on a menu bar. So all these menu items, file, edit, source, refractor, navigate, all of these are on this gray color bar, which is the menu bar. So the first thing that you need is a menu bar. The menu bar is attached to the J frame. And the menu bar is given the menus. And the menus are given menu items. So all the items within a menu. Now if you look at, for example, the file menu, all of these are items listed like 
new open file with the exception of convert line delimiters to. That's not a menu item. What is it? It's a submenu. So if you click on it, it will going to give you more options to look at. In Java, there is no class called submenu. So how do we create submenus? If you add a menu to another menu, the adding menu becomes a submenu. So the menus that are added to the menu bar appear on the bar, and the menus added to another menu appears as submenu. So a menu can have a submenu or menu items. Now menu items can actually have a checkbox to their left, or uh, today we're also going to look at how you can display an image to the left of a menu item, how you can add event handling to a menu item. So all of those things we're going to look at today. So for now, we only have a form. So J menu bar equals to new J menu bar. If you organize your imports, the error will going to go away. J menu file equals to new J menu. Again, when you organize your imports, the errors will go away. And in either of the two cases, you will notice that two additional import statements will going to be added. Similarly, I can have J menu item exit equals to new J menu item. change my is the name to file menu and exit menu item so that I know it's a menu item and this is a menu as I told you earlier that the menu items are added to the menu so I can say file menu dot add exit menu item so menu items are added to the menu. And to the menu bar, we add the menu. So menu items are added to the menu, and menu is added to the menu bar if it is a top-level menu. And finally, the menu bar is assigned to the frame by calling the method set j menu bar. So assigning a menu bar to the frame. Adding a menu to menu bar. Adding a menu item to a menu. Now when I run it, oh, let me push these statements here. Right now when I run it, nothing appears over here because my menu item does not have any text, neither does my menu. So they don't have any text on them. So what, in order to fix this, I'm going to go to the constructor of the J menu, and I'm going to add this text, file, on line number 8. After that, when I run it, it actually shows me the file menu. I click on it. No items show in the list because the menu item does not have a text. So now I go to the menu item, and I add the text, exit. 
Now when I run my application, when I click on file, it has one item exit. The menus be controlled with keyboards, right? So in order for the menus to be controlled with keyboard, you start with an alt key. As soon as you press alt on your keyboard, you will notice that all those letters that can now be controlled are underlined. This is called the mnemonics. In order for you to add the mnemonics to your menu, what we're going to do next is, in the constructor, we will going to use our menu object, and we're going to call upon the method set mnemonic. And we will going to provide it with the character that we want on the mnemonic. We want this to be activated on the letter F. Again, you need to make sure that when you bring about key event, you, you, need, you need to bring one from java.awt package. So bring the key event from java.awt package. So now, when you run it, and while the program is running, notice the F has underlined. So if you do Alt F, the menu will drop down. Very similarly, you can add something like this to a menu item. So exit menu item dot set mnemonic key event dot vk underscore e so now alt f e will actually automatically execute the exit menu item we do not yet have any event handling done but once we do the event handling then alt f e will actually execute the exit option Besides this, you can also add a tooltip. So exit menu item dot set tooltip text. Exit application. So now when you run it, after that, as soon as you bring your mouse over exit, in the tooltip it shows exit application. Now let's learn to add an event. Exit menu item dot add action listener. This is something very similar to what I taught you last week. Instead of passing a this reference, you have the wrong imports. Oh, my. So I created an inner class, new action listener, and then it has an action perform coded. I want to use this menu item to terminate, so I will going to now use system.exit, system.exit. which basically allows me to close the window and also terminate the application. So if I now run this, 
and I want to use my keyboard shortcut, I can use Alt F E and it terminates the application. If I run the application and I click File Exit, it terminates the application. So let's look for our free exit icon. There are some paid ones and there are some free ones. I am at findicons.com website. And as you hover over any of these icons, you can see it gives you it in ICO format, PNG format, and many of the other formats. Even if I take a PNG to bring it in Java, I could drag it and drop it on my Java project and it say, would you like to copy? Say, yeah, I want to copy. And this image will going to show up Now, I am renaming my image to just exit.png. I'm declaring an object of image icon type to which I'm going to give the reference of this exit.png. Make sure you organize your imports as image icon class belongs to javax.swing package. So line 15 is where I introduce my image icon object. Exit.png? Yeah. What does it say for you? Nothing. Nothing? It's, it just doesn't have any file name? No, it's just as a Now, once that image icon has been uploaded, what I want to do is I want to move it right above my menu item. Because I want to use this as an icon for my menu item, so it must be instantiated prior to menu item. So in my menu item, I will going to now use the constructor that takes two parameters. The first parameter is the text that needs to go. The second parameter is the image that needs to be displayed. So now when I click on the file menu, the image actually shows. We will now going to introduce more than one menu items. So I'll just simply copy this code that I have for exit menu and paste it three more times. I'm going to call it new menu item, open menu item, save menu item, Likewise, I'll have new, open, save. Now for each one of the other three new, open, save, I want you to bring images the same way we did for the exit. So right here in the search bar, I can look for new.
these files available. Now starting with new menu item, new image icon, new.png. So you can actually load the image right there and then. You do not have to have the object instantiated first and then you do it in the next step. If that object is only to be used once, then you can only use it once as an unnamed instance. The sequence in which you will add the menu items onto your menu is the sequence in which they will appear. So that's extremely important. The sequence in which you will add is the sequence in which they will appear. We have not yet added them. So we only have file menu dot add exit menu. I can simply copy that statement and paste it one, two, three additional times and replacing each one of them with new menu item, open menu item, and save menu item. So first I declare them, then I add them. Now when I run my application in my file menu, you can see I have all of these icons along with the text. I'll add one last thing before I move on to the next phase of this example and that is that between the menu items you can actually add what we call a separator. So file menu dot add separator, which actually draws a line between and creates sort of kind of a section. So I added a couple of add separators, one between the new and open, the other between the save and exit. With that in place, when I run it, under file menu, notice the separators now appear after new, and after save. 